people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. Here at year's end, two-division current reigning IBF welterweight champion Natasha Jonas wants a Michaela Mayer showdown saying, it's easy to make, and I imagine it would be. It's not like Michaela Mayer is otherwise preoccupied with anything else. I think it's just the big fights I want now, Jonas told BBB TV. No disrespect to Candy Wyatt, that was a let's get the ball rolling for the year because we hadn't fought since November kind of fight. The expectation that there would be more fights on the horizon, I'm not too sure where that is at the moment because we're running out of time and running out of dates. Obviously, the fight that everyone's talked about and that we both want is the Michaela Mayer fight. It's easy to make, she's with Top Rank, who are shown on Sky, I'm with Boxer, who are shown on Sky, so there are no issues about who's going to show it and what platform it's going to be on. I wonder if these comments were made before or after the people at Boxer jumped into bed with NBC and Peacock because their official U.S. broadcast partner, it's not ESPN, it's Peacock. And the problem, or what could be the problem with that is, Michaela Maya don't fight on Peacock, she fights on ESPN, so if you do a fight between them, who's going to be the U.S. broadcast partner? I'm ready for that fight against Natasha Jonas, Mayer told Sky Sports after the Bortot fight. I have been preparing my body to go up. It's a big jump going from 130 up to 147. It takes time to undo what I did to keep my body down at that weight for so many years. But I've already been working on it. I'm prepared to go to 147 and I'm prepared to take on Natasha Jonas right away. That would be the stumbling block that, as far as I know, Michaela Mayer still is a top-ranked fighter. Here in America, top rank is in bed with ESPN, but here in America, Boxer's U.S. broadcast partner, where they were showing some fights, select fights on ESPN, they've officially jumped into bed with Peacock, and all of their fights will be shown on that streaming platform. So it is a potential hiccup, a potential snag. It's all about making the big fights, and to be honest, I'm more experienced, and I don't think I've got a very long time left in the sport, so it's the fights that are personal to me that I want, Jonas said. There are fights that the fans want to see, fights that Ben Shalom of Boxer wants to make, fights that Sky wants to show, and fights that I want. Somewhere, you've got to keep a happy medium in between them. If I was to say three fights, I'd love the Michaela Mayer fight, I'd love some revenge on Katie Taylor, who outpointed her in a fight for the undisputed lightweight championship in 2021, and I'd love a Chantel Cameron fight. They're just personal to me. She didn't mention Terry Harper. In spite of their legendary clash that ended in a draw, she didn't mention Terry. And it's strange that she didn't because she ain't got no unfinished business with Chantel Cameron or Katie Taylor. Katie won the fight. It's over. The one fight where there is some unfinished business, a matter to settle, a fight that didn't have an outcome because it was ruled a draw, is the Terry Harper fight. But it just seems to me like Natasha Jonas is determined to not give her or Steffi Bull the satisfaction. I think there's something very personal there, and we're not gonna know what it is. We're not. Of the three aforementioned fighters that Natasha Jonas mentioned, only one of them is a realistic fight anyway, and that is the Michaela Mayer fight, because both Katie Taylor and Chantel Cameron, they're about to fight each other. They're both on the matchroom side of things. We'll see what happens between them, but I don't see either one of those fighters fighting Natasha Jonas in the near future. Mayer versus Jonas is a lot more realistic, and I expect that at some point in the first or second quarter of next year, that fight will materialize, though there is the matter, there still is the matter of who will broadcast the fight in America, because once again, Boxer's official U.S. broadcast partner is Peacock, but Michaela don't fight on Peacock. She fights on ESPN. So if you do a show between Michaela Mayer and Natasha Jonas in the UK, 
who airs it in America, ESPN by way of Top Rank or Peacock. And you know, if push came to shove, I don't really think Top Rank would stand in the way. Stand in the way of that opportunity for Michaela. They don't have her doing much on this side of the Atlantic Ocean. They didn't have any reservations about loaning out Giovanni Santillian to Golden Boy Promotions this past weekend, so perhaps they won't have any reservations about loaning out Michaela Mayer, even if it means here in America her fight is shown on Peacock. If that is what it all boils down to, I don't get the sense that Top Rank will make too much of a fuss about it. They won't stand in the way. Here's looking forward to Mayer versus Jonas in the coming year. And just in keeping with the theme of all things top rank, over a week ago, Yanni Beck was in action in his unification match with Vincenzo, Vincenzo Gualtieri, and Yanni Beck was not surprised by the one-sided destruction of his opponent. We knew he wasn't going to fight back. We knew from the beginning that he was not going to fight back, said Alam Kanalai during the post-fight interview. We knew about that. It was flummoxing to watch. Gualtieri has always been willing to bite down on his mouthpiece and take risks. That, in part, allowed the German to go on a title run, albeit a transient one. At 30 on the middleweight unification stage, Gualtieri stuck his chin in the air and attempted to go to Alam Kanalai. It was all about wasted movement and energy. Only once has the now unified champion gone 12 hard rounds. So with his gas tank at least an open mystery, Alam Kanalai is convinced that Gualtieri wanted to test him in that department. Gualtieri was trying to stay on the outside of Yanni Beck Alam Kanalai, which didn't make a lot of sense from a boxing perspective because he was the shorter, stumpier fighter and Yanni Beck was the taller, longer guy and he was the jabber. He was the guy pumping out that lead hand consistently. So staying on the outside, you're a sitting duck out there. Your best bet would have been getting close to Yanni Beck and taking it to him fighting for some respect and perhaps putting him on his back foot. In any event, you saw Gualtieri circling Yanni Beck Alam Kanalai, trying to stay on the outside and getting his head jabbed off. Perhaps what he figured is that he'll stay on the outside, make it go a few rounds and wait for Yanni Beck to get tired. That's what Yanni Beck thinks. Yanni Beck who said he was waiting because he was thinking I was going to get tired, but I didn't get tired. He wasn't able to take Yanni Beck Alam Kanalai into those late rounds, those championship rounds, because he didn't make it past the midway point. Yanni Beck's firepower and his fundamentals proved too much for Vincenzo Gualtieri. And now Yanni Beck here today sits as the only unified champion in the men's middleweight division, but he still isn't at the forefront of the sport. He still isn't one of the most recognizable names or recognizable fighters. So what can he do to get more notoriety and thereby more marquee value? Well, his old buddy Carlos Adam, as a few days ago stated, I bet that if a fighter on the level you are used to fighting had my belt, you would take the fight. Papa Aram won't let you fight with me. They know me. I'll fight you for free. To which Yanni Beck Alam Kanalai responded, You were knocked out at 154. You are an easy work for me. Everyone knows this, and you know I can knock you out easily. If you are a man, keep your words. We will send your money to your poor family. For me and my money, this is arguably the best fight to make at middleweight. And I think that speaks to how abysmal the middleweight division is because this is a solid fight. It's a solid fight, but it ain't no Hagler versus Leonard if you get my drift. It's not a classic fight. It's just a solid fight. Carlos Adames is over there on the PBC side of things where he has been ever since he was cast away by top rank. He used to be a top rank fighter, but when he lost the Patrick Teixeira fight at junior middleweight, they cut him loose. He's with the PBC now, the PBC that at this time don't have a broadcast partner. He's already spent a lot of time talking about a Yanni Beck Alam Kanalai fight, perhaps trying to goad him into a fight. I don't think Yanni Beck actually needs that much convincing. If you're serious, you get your people to get on the horn, call the guys at top rank and set it up because you ain't doing nothing right now. You're not about to fight Jermall Chalo. We know you ain't got no fight date because beyond this year, you ain't got no broadcast partner. Till Al Heyman situates that, why not go back over the top rank? Why not fight this guy? Why not make it happen? I want to say that I like Carlos Adamez's boxing more than Yanni Beck's. Yanni Beck at times seems very repetitive and robotic to me, but he also seems a more durable fighter than Carlos Adamez. I don't actually trust 
Carlos Adamez's chin or his gas tank. He punches hard, he's very strong, he's an ambidextrous switch hitter, so he's nuanced. But in terms of durability, I don't trust him. Patrick Teixeira caught him with a hard shot, rattled his cage, really buzzed him. And if Patrick Teixeira can catch you, Yanni Bekalem Kanalai can catch you. Who I think is a much bigger threat and a bigger puncher than Brazil's own Patrick Teixeira. Now that's not saying that since then, Carlos Adames might not have improved because he looks like he improved. He does look like he got better over time. That fight with Patrick was two, three years ago. It's been a while. So it's entirely possible that he got better over time, though there really is only one way to find out and one way to prove it. Stop swapping words on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now and get in the ring. Make it happen. Would you rather wait around for one title, just one title by way of the World Boxing Council, however long that takes since it's taken so long already. He still isn't on the verge of getting his title shot, so do you want to wait around for just one alphabet title or challenge Yanni Bek Alam Kanalai for two? What do you want to do? And that goes for top rank too. What do you want to do? There's not a line of guys lined up around the block to fight Yanni Bek Alam Kanalai. Your best bet to make this guy into any kind of a draw is to keep him busy, keep him active, and keep people seeing him. So why not pay Carlos Adamez to come over and do the business? If he wins, he takes Yanni Bek off of your hands. He's not a champion. He's not your problem anymore. If he loses... If Carlos loses, that's a nice feather in Yanni Bek Alam Kanalai's cap, and that could go a long way in boosting his profile, because there are not that many good fighters in today's middleweight division. So make it happen. And finally, as it pertains to the PBC and PBC fighters, PBC refugees who may not have a broadcast partner when the year turns. Word round the campfire, according to Rick Glacier, is Leonard Edlerby, as many know, has been for years calling the zone the dead zone. The funny thing is now, Showtime Boxing is the one that's the dead zone as they are shutting down. And now Al Heyman is attempting to do a deal with the zone. Wow. Ellerby really looks like a real lame brain now. And you know, initially what we were hearing is that Al would prefer to go into business with Amazon and he doesn't really want to go to the zone. But when you think about how many networks he's already been on, NBC, ESPN, Bounce, Spike, Fox, FS1, ITV, Showtime. His reputation amongst broadcasters can't be all that good. And when a network decides to drop you, when they don't renew your existing deal, what that basically is, is you're getting fired. You're on the chopping block. And that's what happened. I want to make this clear that while there are a lot of people out there who are trying to paint a narrative that it's not that Showtime had an issue with Al or Al's content, they were just getting out of sports. That's not the truth. That's not reality. It was Chris McCarthy who said in plain English, underperforming content that is bringing in less than 10% of the overall viewership, the numbers on Showtime, is getting the axe. There are some who are trying to make it seem as if this wasn't about underperforming content content that wasn't delivering they're trying to make it seem like this was just about showtime getting out of sports when their sports programming wasn't all they canceled you know that american gigolo series with john bernthal that got the axe too several other shows that were in production story-based shows essentially anything that wasn't delivering showtime the numbers they wanted they got rid of it that includes PBC Boxing. Put simply, because for a long time, it was underperforming. And you can't make up for that in just one year, even if it was your biggest year. You can't make up for all that lost time by waiting until the last minute to put up big numbers, to put on fights that people actually want to see. By then, it was too little and too late. It'll really be pie in Leonard Ellerby's eye if they end up on zone. if these rumors from Rick Glacier turn out to be true. And bear in mind, Rick Glacier, like myself, he forecasted Showtime Boxing's demise. Which is a good enough reason to listen. If his ear to the street is telling him that now Heyman wants to go into bed with the zone and he's trying to do a deal with them. There may very well be some truth to it, which would make Leonard Ellerby look quite the fool, given the amount of time he spent shading and talking down the zone. Any Mayweather promotions working with the zone on that network, can that ever happen or will it always be? Mayweather have to be? promotions is not working with the zone at all. At all. Okay. Period. So that's For what? Why it has to be what, what, Showtime, right? what, what, what would we need to work with them? We've been putting on the biggest. 
biggest events in the history of the sport. What the fuck would we need with the zone for? Words spoken in haste in what were better times because at least then, unlike now, they had a broadcast partner. Now they don't. And since then, Floyd Mayweather himself has fought on the DAZN platform. Did you forget who the distributor was for his exhibition match with Deji, KSI's younger brother? For all of Leonard's candor and trashing DAZN as a platform, you tell me, why didn't that fight land on Showtime? Was Floyd Mayweather the B-side to Deji? Because he was fighting on Deji's platform, not the other way around. And look at what we're hearing now via Rick Glacier, that Al Heyman may be entering into a deal with DAZN to get his fighters a platform after Leonard spent all that time running his mouth. It's the arrogance of it that gets me because it's all predicated on success that they used to have, what they used to do when Floyd was an active fighter. Floyd is long since retired. When you were bumping your gums, you weren't talking about what you were doing at that time. You were living in the past, and that's what bit you in the ass. Thus, it would be nothing short of acquiescing to defeat if these rumors turn out to be true and Al Heyman's PBC lands on the DAZN platform, while it might be the most idealistic scenario to the consumer who could get three brands of boxing on one platform instead of having them scattered on several platforms for several monthly or annual fees to the customers, it would be ideal. But to Al Heyman, it would be an acquiescence of defeat and pie in Leonard Ellerby's eye. What are you gonna tell me? That you guys were doing so fucking great at Showtime that you ended up getting the boot? And that after 37 years, close to 40 years in the sport of boxing, most of which you guys weren't even there for, it's on your watch that Showtime Boxing got driven into the ground. It was on your watch that Showtime Boxing got shut down. How did that happen? Why did that happen? Was it because of the great numbers you were putting up? Because your content was bringing so many eyes to the platform? Is that what broadcasters usually do with their money makers? They give them the boot? No, they don't. You know how this works. You can broadcast a half an hour of sock puppets. So long as it's drawing eyes to the platform, the platform itself isn't going to give it the ax. So if something gets the ax, it's because it's not delivering and it's because they don't need it. Al Heyman failed! And given how many bridges he's already burned with how many broadcasters, he'll be lucky if DAZN is willing to have him because those fighters, those fighters need fight dates and if you can't get them that, it won't be long before they start floating away. It won't be long before they go elsewhere to someone who can accommodate them because they've got bills to pay and families to feed. Loyalty to you is not more important than that. If you want loyalty, get a dog because this is boxing. Carlos Adamez wants to box Yanni Beck Alamkanalai. Brandon Figueroa wants to box Emanuel Navarrete. These are both top ranked fighters. What can you do for these fighters without a broadcaster? You better hurry up and get one. Because these guys don't want to kick off the coming year with uncertainty, not knowing what they're going to do and where they're going to fight, if they're going to get paid and when. They want to know. They want assurances.